Thank you for joining us on PM Express. Tonight, we are talking about the 2024 budget with the minority leader. We are going to get the minority's take. What is the minority's verdict on the 2024 budget? It is a very important document, considering that it is the election year budget. There is a lot in there that we need to unpack from the view of the minority. You know that they describe themselves as the government in waiting. What are their own alternatives to a budget they have described as empty. The minority leader is my guest. And that is Dr. Kaisel at the Forsen. Doc, thank you very much for the thank time you, Evans. on PM thank Express. You. And let's start off straight off by talking about the budget. And mm. you have described this as empty. Why? It is. Um, the definition of empty is something without substance, something that does something tangible for you to be able to show. I've read the budget statement, the one for the budget speech, which ideally should be the one that will contain most inspiring part of the budget, mm -hmm. without the numbers. And what I can assure you is that this is the worst form of an uninspiring budget, and a true definition of empty budget. So there's nothing in there for me to be proud of. I'm disappointed at MPP. In fact, this is the budget statement that they have actually communicated to the people of Ghana that they're saying bye-bye, they're leaving office. So this is their bye-bye budget. They, 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 if you read it carefully, the government has given up. They're saying bye-bye, Ghana. That's what, what it what is. is. What in the budget gives you that indication? Because, you see, you would have ideally see an attempt by the government to fix some of their mess and to apologize to the people of Ghana over what they have done and probably seek for forgiveness. And it will be up to the people of Ghana to decide that we will forgive them or not and depart from the norms, what they have actually done in the past that has actually brought us to where we are. But I did not see any of them. So they are comfortable where they are. They are aware that they have brought the Ghanaian economy on its nails. They are aware that their behavior, that the Catholic Bishop Conference actually actually described it as massive and uncontrolled corruption is the one that has brought us to where we are. And so they are comfortable. They just want to continue business as usual and crush the people of Ghana before they leave office. But the specifics prove that the government actually is listening to the suffering masses. They well, have a raft of tax reliefs. They've extended the zero rate of VAT on locally manufactured African prints mm -hmm. for two more years. Mm -hmm. You have a so waiver. So it already exists, uh, but they are extending the time. The so it already exactly. exists. Mm -hmm. Yes. A waiver on import duties, mm -hmm. on import of electric vehicles, mm -hmm. public transport for a period of eight again, years. Again, before you go on, let me make this point. I don't know how many vehicles in Ghana are electric. Where are the charging ports? So, so how many Ghanaians will benefit from that? Useless. Waiver, import duties on semi-knockdown, completely knocked down electric vehicles imported by registered EV assembly companies in Ghana for a period of eight years. You make that uh, point, but this, but this is the policy to create an enabling environment. Yes, yes, yes. So, so to encourage the uh, use it, of electric it, cars it in is, Ghana. It is to encourage the use of electric cars, uh, 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 of, of, of uh, semi-knockdown vehicles in Ghana. Is it to, in, in electric? In electric, electric. So That's again, a, again, look, we live in an economy that we are even struggling to get power. Okay? How many vehicles in Ghana today are electric? For them to say that we are uh, we are giving tax exemptions for electric, I don't know if you own an electric vehicle. I don't no. have one. I don't have. And and ask go out but, but and find a how many are, vehicles. But because you want to be environmentally responsible, so, so everybody has been encouraged not to get one. So even this is a great government policy. So it is looking at the future, probably, but it's not giving something presently to the ordinary Ghanaian. You say ordinary Ghanaian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't know of any public transport or any individual that owns electric vehicle. As an MP, I don't know of any. But anyone. as a government policy. It's a government policy it's, looking it's at the one future. That is, is, is worth applauding. So you, you know what the government must do, first of all. You need to create the enabling environment for electric vehicle. This is one that creates This is that. not. The one to create the enable environment for electric vehicles will be access to charging port. So if I bring electric vehicle here to start use, I mean, for, for me to start using it. The first thing I'll find out is, is that when I travel to Edumako, and my, for some reason, 
I need to charge my vehicle. Where are the charging ports? Which fuel, fuel station can I park in and charge my electric vehicle? If all of them are not available and you start saying that you are giving exemptions for the person that brings the vehicle, I need to use the vehicle here in Ghana yeah, to be sure that I can use it first. Fuel charging ports in Ghana, but every policy you start gradually. No, so like it, it is the reverse. They are doing the reverse. You see, they are out of touch to the realities of the, <laughs> of the ordinary Ghanaian. What we need first is that create the environment for fuel stations, some of them, to convert the pumps into charging points. Talking about the ordinary Create Ghanian. the environment uh, uh, for the ordinary Ghanaian to be able to benefit from it. Talking about the ordinary Ghanaian, they have a few reliefs in there for them too. Extend the zero rate of VAT on locally assembled vehicles for two years. Okay, so that, That's a good one, is it not? Okay, it's, it's a VAT is something that uh, Evans, let me explain this. If you extend the zero rate it is not the same as exemption. VAT is, 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 VAT is a very technical subject. If you say exemption, it means he can't charge VAT. But if you say zero rate, it means he can charge VAT at a rate of zero yeah. so that he'll be able to offset his import, uh, import, uh, input VAT to that of output VAT. But that bedding uh, is not shifted uh, to so it is something. So it is something that they are giving to businesses. Uh, in that area. Again, let's find but out you know, who are those businesses. Yeah, yeah. Who are those businesses in that, well, in, in, in that well, area? Well, very specifically, these are the businesses manufacturing cars locally. Mm -hmm. And we've been encouraging well, to buy cars locally. Well, well and it has, it's exist already, isn't it? Well, they're extending it. <laughs> so, so, again, it's an existing policy. Extending it, you've done nothing. Because obviously it will be extended anyway, because you've signed an agreement with them that bring in this kind of businesses. But in the end, we'll give you this tax exemption. You extend it and extend it. I don't know why he's doing it in a piecemeal. But Should for, give them 10 years but, exemption once and for all. But for economy that you've described as being at the ICU. Mm -hmm. It's worse than ICU. Yes, you, what mm -hmm. you said. For a government running this economy mm -hmm. to give a, a waiver, mm -hmm. to extend the waiver, mm -hmm. no matter how small, it's significant. It, de it depends on how you say it. I don't, I don't know how much they are getting from this. And unfortunately, he's failed to quantify it. So if he had quantified to say he's given a billion tax worth of tax exemption or uh, tax reliefs, I would, I would have applauded. But if you were to add it, all these reliefs, I don't think it would be up to 200 million. But eventually you'll get the specifics when yes, the we'll wait for it. Come. Now, really drilling down to the ordinary man, though, there's been a significant campaign before the budget was read mm -hmm. about sanitary parts mm -hmm. because uh, girls in your constituency, for example, were struggling. And constituencies across the I've, country. I've been pushing for Yes, it. exactly. The government had listened to them. And in this budget, they actually have announced for very for the first time in a long time that they are granting import duty waivers for raw material for the local manufacture of sanitary parts. They are granting exemptions on the importation of uh, of the materials that you also need exactly. to manufacture. This. Exactly. You applaud this, don't you? You see, let me commend this policy wholeheartedly, hands on heart. This is extremely important. But first, let me say a big thank you. Honorable Sosu, for the bold step he took by drafting a private member's bill to present it to Parliament. And after Right Honorable Speaker made a strong statement on the floor of the House and cautioned the government that if they don't do it, he, Right Honorable Speaker, will encourage any private member who wants to bring a motion to take the uh, tax on sanitary pad out. So if the government has done it, it is only right for me to say that they have listened, one, to right Honorable Speaker and his caution, and two, they are taking steps after the Honorable uh, Sosu, the MP for Medina, took a bold step in drafting a private member's bill. It's there. The bill is there for everybody to see. And um, uh, it was widely publicized. So the government is only acting because, one, Everybody else is talking about it. And if they had failed to act, they would have been very insensitive. And so they've only done what, they, what is required of them as a government. The government is required to act when the people say, hey, 100%. So, uh, in fact, on the hand side, I don't see why I should clap for them. They've done what is required of them as a government. Because every Ghanaian, in fact, the ordinary Ghanaian has spoken up, said that, do this for us from Parliament and... and, and but and, this and, does and not cover imported sanitary parts. Yes, locally. Locally. I think so it's, if, it's, if, a, it's so a first So if you're stop. manufacturing it locally, 
your raw materials will be cut. So if you're if you're locally manufacturing it too, then you also get the waiver. But if you're importing it, you have to pay. Yes, but uh, Evans, yes, it is a first step. They should have waived everything. But these are things that I believe we can produce it locally, and we should encourage, encourage the Ghanaian industries to be able to venture into things like this and produce it locally. That one, I'm for that. Let's stay on the subject of tax exemptions and waivers. They've also granted exemptions on importation of agricultural machinery, but the one that caught my attention mm. is the one on medical consumables. Mm -hmm. For well, they didn't specify, okay. but they were, they were broad. Mm -hmm. Exemptions on agricultural machinery and equipment mm -hmm. and inputs and medical consumables, raw materials for pharmaceutical industry. Mm -hmm. Medical consumables because of the conversation we've had about dialysis, for example. Consumables exactly. have become a exactly. big deal. The reason why Colibu was shut down yeah. because of the cost of the consumables. Exactly. This hasn't been specified mm. as part to cover it, mm. but it's broadly stated as medical consumables. That's a good one. Isn't yeah. It? Evans, thanks to you and your colleagues in the media. With our colleague uh, from the minority side um, on, on the health committee, Honorable Akando and Co., they have waged a strong war, a strong war against the taxation of medical material consumables, consumables. for the likes of dialysis. We await the details. And I can assure you, if it comes to the floor and then it is not comprehensive enough, we'll make amendment to make it comprehensive. Because in times like this, when people struggle even to pay medical bills, you can't be seen taxing things of this nature. Because you remember, according to the World Bank, and in fact, I just read a document by the UNDP, UNDPC, UNDP, mm -hmm. United Nations Development Program. They have said that about 25% of the Ghanaian population has been driven to poverty, extreme po poverty. That represents about 8.5 million Ghanaians as a result of what we've gone through 2022 and 2023. That simple means that times are hard. Times are hard. People are struggling even to eat. People are struggling to pay for basic bills. This, for me, is the moment for a government to look at items just like we are discussing and then be able to take some of those taxes out of it to make life, af uh, I mean, bearable mm. for, for, for some of these people. Mm. Which is what they've done. Exactly. So you applaud them for the Sanitary Part Initiative. Yes. You applaud them for the uh, waiver <coughs> and exemptions on medical consumables. This certainly doesn't sound like a budget that is empty. No, it's empty. It's, it's empty. And that, first that, of all, that, I put it to you, is a yeah. contradiction of so, your so, earlier so, position. No, no, but Evans, um, let me first say this. Why the removal of tax, taxes on sanitary plan? Public outcry. Major statement made by the opposition. By the Speaker of Parliament, a private member's bill has been filed by the Honorable Sosu. The government sensing defeat and embarrassment thinks that it is better because the speaker has said that this house will have to approve it. They are sensing defeat and embarrassment and they have quickly turned around to say that, hey, this should be done. And for that matter, they have moved away. Uh, and they've been faster than the private members because, in fact, they are yet to bring the bill. And if care is not taken, we'll end up approving Sosu's bill ahead of the government's money. Unless you're doing a certificate of agency, it's not going to happen. No, yeah. it's been late. So we'll do, go straight and deal with it. The government is yet to present their bill. But there's already a private member's bill before us. So we'll look at which one is elaborate. In fact, I won't be surprised that we'll end up passing Sosu's one and the government's one will come later. Because that one, the bill is ready. But the appropriations bill and all the other documents should come. I ask you debate. So it's not ready, but the Sosu's one is ready. So we'll look at which one will succeed first. Maybe the government will have to collapse their own and support Sosu. I mean, but, but that's but what the, it is. But the fundamental point is once you've applauded them for it, it's an admission that it's not empty. No, no, you see, I'm at least the two items I'm there that you applaud them for. I'm supporting the taxes and the removal, uh, the removal of taxes on sanitary pad. Because me, Sitting here, I've said publicly that this is not the time to tax somebody's. But once you admit that, you cannot also then say the same breath that oh, it's no, no, empty. No, no, but it's empty. I mean, apart from 
uh, what we've just if talked about. If not for anything, your, cons, your, your girls in your constituency yes. now will have cheaper so, access so, to sanitary so, products. So you, you want me to say that it's a good budget? While there's empty, the while the budget is empty. Empty means there's absolutely nothing it's in it. It's absolutely useless. That's what it is. This budget is absolutely useless. In, in spite it does of not, it, you see, the sanitary part. Let me tell you something. What tax are the measure. issues confronting the people of Ghana today? High unemployment, high poverty rate. Okay, businesses collapsing, high lending rate, monetary policy hitting the roof, economic growth trying to do under two percent. These are the issues confronting the people of Ghana. Hyperinflation. These are the issues confronting the people of Ghana. The budget must confront it. In accounting, we have something we call materiality. The quantum of the things in the budget, how material, how strong it is, that it will be able to remove a particular burden. This is immaterial. Because what is the amount involved? The minister is imposing taxes worth 11 billion Ghana cities. Are you referring to the stamp duties? Yes. Which the, the minister same says. The is imposing 11 billion Ghana cities. He says the, the, the bonds, and I'm referring to the, the stamp duty bonds, uh, subject to ad valorem taxes, yes. will be expanded while the specific rates will be reviewed upwards. Exactly. It's an imposition of tax, it's an increase of the tax. Uh, uh, stamp, stamp duty. You see, you have to, if you buy property, you have to stamp it. If you buy a land, you have to stamp it to be registered at the, uh, what do you call it, the Lands Commission. If you bring in some money, uh, 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 what do you call it, even uh, financial sector, if you are to um, syndicate something like a board, if they are to bring it into the country, you have to pay stamp duty. And so many things. So stamp duty is going to go up. But which other handle are you suggesting account is accounting for the 10 billion you said? so so all the taxes read more you see they are they're imposing emission tax yes the, there's also the finance minister talks about emission tax they are also going to be uh, a simplified tax return rate a negative ex externality to plastic waste yes he says plastic waste and pollution mm -hmm. government will review and expand the environmental excise duty to cover plastic packaging, exactly. industrial and vehicle emissions. Okay, so all these taxes put together, and the way they've written it in such a way, they've written it in such a way that the details are not there. If you go into the appendices and look at the new tax handles, it comes to 11 billion. The minister himself has said it, that they are raking in 11 billion new taxes. But let me say this. Raking in 11 billion new taxes simply means that you are taking 11 billion new taxes from individuals and businesses from 2024 20, January to December 2024, in times like this, 11 billion. And that is what we have said that this government, we in the NDC, will find it very difficult to support these taxes for a simple reason. Number one, the finance committee of which I'm a member, in fact, I used to be the ranking, my colleague Onobu Adongo is now ranking that committee. This government has presented a number of memorandums to through Parliament to the Finance Committee, of which 47 companies under one district, one factory, 1D, 1F, he's given tax exemptions worth $449 million, equivalent to 5.5 billion Ghana cities. Two points here. This government doesn't need new taxes in the first place. Because if you, if you actually require revenue, you wouldn't give tax exemptions to companies that are closer to this government. And they, as, soon as, as soon as you just go to them and say, I'm closer to this government, and there's no format, they'll just allow you to they grant you tax exemption. $459 million, $5.5 billion. Our position is we will never have a conversation on these new taxes until they have withdrawn all of these tax exemptions. Because, you see, it is like robbing Peter to pay Paul. They are asking you to pay these taxes. But in the end, they are taking your taxes and giving it to cronies of this administration. But how do you know that? For, no, but that's what it is. We've, we, we've checked the background of these companies. In the coming days, I'll publish the list of the companies. But exemptions are done because if you do the... In Washington, our leaders are fighting the obesity epidemic by making sure that their health plans cover obesity treatments. If they would only do the same for the rest of us, we wouldn't have to make this ad. 
Tell our leaders, update Medicare policy to include obesity medications now. Paid for by the Health Equity Coalition for Chronic Disease. At Sierra University, we've been empowering students to pursue their goals for over 130 years. From innovative degree programs and helpful tools to campus locations focused on creating community for international students, we can help you find your way forward. We even offer international students 25% off tuition on select degree programs. Visit Strayer.edu to learn more. Eligibility rules, restrictions, and exclusions apply. Strayer University is certified to operate in Virginia by CHEV and has many campuses, including at 2121 15th Street North in Arlington, Virginia. The, the cost-benefit analysis. In the long term, it benefits the economy. Look, so you grant them the exemptions so at this stage. I can assure you that some of the companies they are giving exemptions to, they claim that they have items at the port and they will need to clear them for them to be able to finish their factory. We did background checks. The items have already been cleared and the factory has already been completed. So it's a scam. The whole system is a scam. I call it the new kickback. That's how I call it. Because you see, what is going on under that tax exemption regime is something we need to give it some public attention. But, it but, is just not right. Even apart from that, today, Ghana is struggling to raise $600 million from the IMF, second review. $600 million. The money is here. The money is in this, in, in, in this economy. But you are giving tax exemptions worth $459 million to ordinary uh, to businesses that are closer to the government. So why, what else are we doing? But, but no, I'm, does this really make sense? But that's what I'm it curious. It makes no sense. If you have the details you just talked about, a, a company that is getting a tax exemption. Yes, I have the details. And the reason is that they have goods to clear from the port. But they've already cleared the they've goods. They've cleared it. Open, but the goods have been cleared. That, and and, and uh, uh, some uh, of the factories have already been opened. The open. question to us, what have you done about this? Because this is so, a very so, serious so accusation. That, that is why we have held it in abeyance at the Finance Committee. That is why we have held it in abeyance. So disclose. And, and so in the coming days, I'm bringing this matter to the public for proper scrutiny. And I will name and shame these companies. I will name and shame these companies. I will publish it in the coming days. Because clearly. Why not, why not now? Right. This is an opportunity to tell us. No, no, us I don't the have details. the details here. I can, if you give me a minute, I can just pick up my phone and name it. And name it to you now. It's, um, it's something we can easily This is not an issue. So, uh, so and, 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 and this and this, by the way, is there, there, important. There, there, because, there are serious issues because, of course, they, if if he makes an allegation, I, I want to they, see the they evidence. Are, they are, they are serious issues, and these companies, I, I can assure you, something must be done about this because the way it's going, until these tax exemptions are dealt with, we in the NDC will not support it. A and the budget, by the way, is going to be debated. I mean, it's for we, a few we days in the NDC will not support for, it for a few days. So, so first. You have a company under 1D1F called Agroho Ghana Limited. They are, um, they are giving them 747 million US dollars tax exemption. Second, they are giving another company called Amponsa Effa, Amponsa Effa Pharmaceuticals Limited, 1.9 million dollars. Another company, B5 Limited, uh, another another um, amount of uh, 11.4 million dollars uh, BCAF food company limited 271 million dollars uh, by by O and J pharmaceutical limited 159.8 million dollars um, a company called Canadian Canadian Commercial Corporation. Uh, they say they are doing power generation. So $1.8 million. Another company, CMAF. CMAF, $8 million. Um, you have here Cement the Africa, Ghana Limited, $8.6 million. Uh, CK Engineering. CK Engineering is benefiting from this tax exemption. Uh, an amount of uh, $350,000. Then you have Continental Brew Investment Ghana Limited. It's, they call it strategic investment. It's $6.8 million. Another company, Eco Poly Industries Limited, uh, $207 million. 
uh, it's 47 companies in all. If you want me to mention, I'll mention all of them. And you say, oh. and then all of them, total amount, 449.4 million dollars. And this I'm is going to publish it immediately after this interview. And, and this is formally before the finance. Committee. This is before finance committee as we speak. Uh, have you managed to reach any of these companies um, themselves? So we met some of them at the committee, and we in the NDC opposed it. They and, didn't justify and, this and to your satisfaction? Me, we've done background work, and I can assure you that 50% of these companies, they have already finished the work that they are claiming tax exemption from. In fact, 50% is understatement. Touch wood. We in the NDC will not support this tax policy this tax exemption, and we will not have any conversation on the new taxes until all of this has been withdrawn, finally, because it came from the government. The government should come and do the honorable thing by withdrawing all of this, else no tax policy will go through. Uh, uh, and that is why we are saying that what they have done today by introducing tax exemption, uh, new taxes worth 11 billion Ghana cities is insensitive. In fact, it's most cruel and it shows that this government is out of touch with the realities of the people. I mean, and, and just to be clear, you're not suggesting that the companies themselves have done something wrong. This no, is, no, no, this no. Is a That's government what I'm initiative. saying. I'm saying that the government, government has initiative. brought this. This is not the companies. They yeah. have worked with, with, with these companies. But I'm surprised that government would take such a bold initiative, bold decision to bring, um, what do you call it, um, a, ta a request for a tax exemption to parliament at the time. At the time that these companies, they themselves are aware that they have finished the job. Hmm. So what is the basis? And you said this is going to come to Parliament for... for it is already the here. Hmm. They, they are in Parliament as we speak. In fact, they are before the Finance Committee and they are begging us to approve it. And we are saying no. So you're, going to, reject, it. you're going to reject all that? We have already rejected it. W would it come for a vote? And when it comes to the floor, we are voting against it. At the committee level, have you, have you already decided? In fact, they, they have not put the question for the vote yet because they saw our mood, and so they are scared to put it to vote. And if they had put in any of them to proper vote, they would have lost it, and they would have to redraw it. So they are yet to put it to vote, but all of them has been discussed. Today, the, the finance minister, also in this budget, declared that last time he came before you, he said, we are turning the corner. Mm. Now he says... Mm. They have turned the corner. <laughs> Inflation is down mm -hmm. from 54% to 33.2%. Mm -hmm. 35. He says, well, 35, yes, 35.2%. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. He says the, if you look at the uh, exchange rate, depreciate, the rate of depreciation mm -hmm. has stabilized quite largely. Mm -hmm. He's right, is it not? Okay. That He's the wrong. signs show that they've turned He's the corner. He's wrong. You see, he's tickling himself and, 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 and laughing and maybe you know, even laughing, smiling. I say this for a simple reason. This finance minister and this government, they are leaving behind a bankrupt economy. Economy that is in default. In fact, yen tuya economy, that's what they are leaving behind. This government is leaving behind a haircut economy. An economy that they have given people haircut. A crude haircut and a very painful one. They are leaving behind an economy that is completely debt riddled debt riddled economy they are also leaving behind an economy that is overtaxed businesses and individuals are complaining that the tax burden in this country is just too much they are leaving behind an economy that is witnessing hyperinflation 35% and we should clap for them but consider this that is the same government that not long ago when inflation was 15% they said they've never heard it before. But I took consider, considering that the inflation came from 54% to, to 35%. So we should clap for them. That is a significant drop. It is not enough. But it, it is, is not enough. But it's definitely look, something look, to acknowledge. Look, acknowledge what? From 54% to what? 35%. I, sh I should acknowledge that they have mismanaged and destroyed us. And that the economy is 35%. Is that what I should acknowledge? It's terrible. In the history of the Fourth Republic, since when, Evans, you are young as myself, and uh, since when did we witness inflation at 35%? And that we should clap for them. They are actually leaving behind an economy with a very high unemployment rate, an economy with very high monetary policy rate, 
an economy that since this fourth republic, misery index, and what is the worst that we have seen. So they are leaving behind an ahochre economy. This government is leaving behind a collapsed cocoa sector. They are leaving behind an economy that the Catholic Bishop Conference described as massive and uncontrolled corruption. An economy that governance are in, is, is, is in tatters. That is the economy they are leaving behind. And all of this, he said he's turned a corner. He's not even close to that corner for him to turn this year. But he's not close to the corner. But he also he has crashed us. He also provided some he facts. He has crashed us. He provided some facts. He says for the very first time, the GDP mm -hmm. in 2024 mm -hmm. is going to cross the one trillion CD mark. No, I mean, now. What is the GDP growth? You see, Evans, these things, they say... But you don't non, dispute this. No, they say it to non-economists. Non-economists, I give you one assignment. But, but nominal or not? Look at, no, no, what trillion, is the nominal GDP growth? One, one trillion but, but do you know what they have done? Crossing the market do, 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 do you know what, what they have done? In the coming days, I'm going to do that analysis and give you right numbers. When they took office, look at the per capita GDP income. Per capita income of the ordinary Ghanaian. Population divided by GDP growth and express it in U.S. dollars. When they took office, how much an average Ghanaian is worth and compared to, to today? Ghanaians are worse off under this administration. When they took office, the ordinary Ghanaian was far better than the ordinary Ivorian. Today, go and see it's neck to neck. Neck to neck. When they took office, Ivory Coast economy and Ghana's economy, look at it, how, how close it was. They, we were miles ahead of Ivory Coast. They are catching up. Next year, they will over, 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 overtake us. Ivory Coast is overtaking Ghana to become the second largest economy in West Africa. When they took off, we were miles ahead. Go and look at the numbers. Go and look at the numbers. So, say one trillion, he said nothing. Use the deflator and deflate it. Factor inflation and see what they have done. Well, the mess this government has, when, has actually committed when, when is, you, is unbelievable. When you were the deputy finance minister, uh, you, you had $219.5 billion. Yes. You, are, you see? And they moved it now in 2024 now to okay. cross the one trillion mark. So, that so, left the so, list of so, feet. So, so Evans, okay, in economics, we don't compare nominal numbers. We don't compare nominal numbers. You, you, you have to be, if you are to do that, the right way to do it is to apply what we call deflator, adjust to inflation. If you adjust to inflation using the deflator, and every economist will tell you, that if you adjust it using the deflator, you see what they have done. If you give me a minute, I'll just go to the Statistical Service web website, pick the deflator numbers from 2017 to date, average it and apply it to this uh, uh, billion, and you see what they have done. Ghanaians are worse off under this administration. That's what they have done. What about the IMF's verdict? Yes. That the IMF on the 6th of October 2023 issued mm -hmm. a press release communicating the SLA that mm -hmm. we've reached uh, on, on, after the second mm -hmm. review. Mm -hmm. And they say, quote, the authority's strong policy and reform commitment under the program is bearing fruit. Mm -hmm. That's a quote. They continue. And signs of economic stabilization are emerging. Imagine that is the IMF. Okay, so that the, that the policies, strong reform, bearing fruit. That so is that is a validation of the, of the finance minister's no, position. No, no what finance minister's position? In fact, it, it, all what they are trying to say is that we are moving from worse to bad. So the worst is improving. So we are bad. That's what they are trying to say, from worse to bad. But Kwanzaa Adijinjaina. It is bad. The situation is bad. But, Look, the, but, the, intervention, but, the, inter but the interventions are bearing fruit. Oh, the, the only thing you can say that the IMF has done successfully is that they have signaled some confidence that the headmaster is in town. And so these people, the indisciplined people, will start be, becoming disciplined. That is all what they have done. That, hey... They have seen indisciplined President Tekufuado, a very indisciplined chairman of economic management team, Alaji Baumia. They have seen a very indisciplined vice president, uh, uh, what do you call it, finance minister. But now that the IMF is in town, the headmaster with a big stick, they are going to do what is required of them. So that has brought some confidence. 
Thank you, IMF, for doing that. That one, I give it to IMF. I can't give it to the government because they've done nothing. We've seen the economic management. It's in shambles. We've seen it. But apart from that, I haven't seen anything else. I have not seen anything else. This budget is indeed the definition of an empty budget. The, the budget also references a, a few other interventions that they are putting in place. Um, they talk about the youth start, and I'm pretty sure that it's something that had come up. But they also make a declaration talking about what we've just been talking about, their, their achievements over the period. They tell us that jobs that they've created over the time, and they put a specific number to this. And I don't know if you've managed to check it just yet. Mm. The government says... Over the years, they've created over 2.3 million jobs in the private and public sectors. And I'm quoting, approximately 900,000 in the private sector and 1.4 million in the public sector. <laughs> so the government is now taking credit for the work that is done by multimedia for employing. <laughs> well, they say they've created hey. the environment for, for, for us to employ. Hey, brother, we are in trouble. We are in trouble as a country. First, you know, they've done a very lazy work. Very, very, very lazy work. For them to just conclude that the private sector, together with the public sector, have created something in excess of 200,000. 2.3 2, 2. 2. 2. 3 million jobs. What they have failed to do is to tell us how many jobs we have lost. This are the match it to the growth of the number of people that are emerging into the uh, job market. What is the growth? How many students or university graduates are entering the job market every year? Are we benchmarking this? It is not for nothing that the World Bank, the IMF, everybody else, UNDP, is saying that unemployment rate is skyrocketing. And it's becoming a national security challenge. So throwing these numbers is nothing. In fact, it is propaganda. Throwing these numbers is nothing but propaganda. Knowing the mess and what they have done to the ordinary Ghanaian, that is what they want to do. But these numbers must be verifiable. They should show us where exactly in the public sector they have created 1.4 million jobs. Well, the details have not been provided. Yes, will they you, should give will, us the details. Will you, will you demand same when this matter yes. comes to the floor for debate? Yes. Doug, let's talk about the relief effort mm. for the victims of the Volta Flats mm -hmm. after the spillage of the, uh, of the uh, Akusomo Dam. Mm. You've been very consistent that government hasn't done enough. Yeah. You were expecting to hear something in the mm -hmm. budget. Mm -hmm. The finance minister announced today that they have now allocated 220 million uh, CDs for the relief phase of, of this whole uh, crisis. Is that enough? Is the relief phase not over? The relief phase is over. The relief phase is when the epic centers, parts of about 11 constituencies in the Volta region and part of OT, were going through difficult moments and there was the need for the government to have come in to give them a place to sleep and provide food and relief items to them. The government's response so far has been abysmal. In fact, it took members of parliament from the affected constituencies, who are largely members of the NDC, to mobilize resources to take care of their people. That is a fact. In fact, even we in opposition, we've done more than the government. The one that collects. So for me, it is too little, too late. 220 million. It is too little, too late. Budgeted. Because even as a caucus, we had to dip our hands into our coffers and spend about 1.5 million cities. But as a caucus. Government had to do it right. But well, since okay, government certainly has emergency funds available. When the people out there were struggling to have something to eat, they were struggling to have a place to sleep, and it took the lives of the media, individual media houses, individual business owners, and members of the opposition party to donate to support these communities. 
It's now that the government is coming to allow uh, announce their relief effort. What have they done so far? But they also have a next phase. What have they done so far? They also have a next phase of resettlement, and they are reached out to the uh, the IDA crisis response window initiative with the World Bank to get that done, and that would go to so they resettlement, are going, victims, so restoration, simple put, they compensation. They are going to borrow money to come and take care of them. That's what they are trying but to say. We, we are no, they are going to borrow crisis. money to come and take care of them. But what's, what happens what, to our resources? What, what's wrong with that? You see, you see so when would they get this loan? Remember, your country is bankrupt. When are they going to get this loan? It will come. But, but the when? The people need it. But, but the people need it. doesn't matter how you get it or where you get it. Until they get the loan, it means these people will not be resettled. First, we have Segleme out there. We have Segleme. You won't spend 10 million to put it into proper sh uh, uh, shape for them to have a place to sleep. We a toast to our new college grad who fills us with so much joy, almost as much as when we're in our RV. Oh, the world is your oyster, kiddo, and ours too. Now that we're covered with Progressive, Dad and I can hop in our RV anytime we want. Might even splurge on a retractable awning. Oh, look out. <laughs> Sorry, what was I talking about? Protect your loved one with an RV policy from Progressive. Take as little as four minutes to see what you could save at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Absolutely. You can resettle them easily and it's enough to take care of the people. You don't need to go and borrow money again for this. So, as I said, government's approach to this major spillage, the largest ever man-made disaster in our lifetime, has been appalling. They don't care. Finally, on the floor, you were saying bye-bye to the finance minister. Yes, yes. The bye-bye... So, what, what, what was that all about? Oh, there is rumor all over that the minister of finance is, is, is going to resign or they are sacking him in the coming days. And that um, this is his last budget. In fact, colleagues in parliament is all over. So, we have to say bye-bye to him for messing us up. But his legacy is there for everybody to see. What's the legacy? His legacy. And you, you know his legacy. This is the Minister of Finance who knows how to borrow to benefit his personal business and those of his cronies. His legacy is that he will be remembered for destroying rival businesses. He will be remembered for destroying and bringing Ghanaian economy, particularly the financial sector, to its nails. He tortured pensioners, sent many of them to their early graves. Our finance minister is the one who gave cruel and painful haircut and destroyed many Ghanaian families. It should be noted that he is the one that plunged about 8.5 million Ghanaians into extreme poverty, according to the UNDPC. U U U U UNDP. This is the same finance minister that is saying bye-bye to us. But let me tell you, Evans, he did not do this alone. He did it with the vice president, Dr. Baumia. He did it with him. He did it with the governor of the central bank, the one who described us as hooligans. He did it with him. These three are the faces of destruction. So they can let him go, but he will not go alone. The vice president is going December 7th. Ghanaians will vote and reject him. And by 7 January 2025, he will go with him together with the governor. The three of them, faces of destruction. And the famous solid economic mismanagement team. We know them. We know what they have done. They've reduced themselves from economic mismanagement team, solid economic mismanagement team, to li li liquid soap. We know what they have done. So, bro brother, Evans, the minister can leave, but his legacy lives on. What he has done to the people of Ghana is there for everybody to see. History will not be kind to him. That is Dr. Keselato Forsing. He is the minority leader. And as a debate... On the 2024 budget continue we'll get to see a bit more of the facts we'll be scrutinizing it here on pm express enjoy the rest of your evening thank you